February 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will release you from this place. When he releases you, he will drive you out completely from this place. Instruct the people that each man and each woman is to request from his or her neighbor items of silver and gold. Now the Lord granted the people favor with the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, respected by Pharaoh's servants and by the Egyptian people. Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go throughout Egypt, and all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die from the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, to the firstborn son of the slave girl who is at her hand mill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There will be a great cry throughout the whole land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. But against any of the Israelites, not even a dog will bark against either people or animals, so that you may know that the Lord distinguishes between Egypt and Israel. All these your servants will come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Go, you and all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. Then Moses went out from Pharaoh in great anger. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not release the Israelites from his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be your beginning of months. It will be your first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, In the tenth day of this month, they each must take a lamb for themselves according to their families, a lamb for each household. If any household is too small for a lamb, the man and his next-door neighbor are to take a lamb according to the number of people. You will make your count for the lamb according to how much each one can eat. Your lamb must be perfect, a male, one year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You must care for it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then the whole community of Israel will kill it around sundown. They will take some of the blood and put it on the two side posts and top of the door frame of the houses where they will eat it. They will eat the meat the same night. They will eat it roasted over the fire with bread made without yeast and with bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, its legs, and its entrails. You must leave nothing until morning, but you must burn with fire whatever remains of it until morning. This is how you are to eat it, dressed to travel your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You are to eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. I will pass through the land of Egypt in the same night, and I will tack all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both of humans and of animals, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are, so that when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and this plague will not fall on you to destroy you when I attack the land of Egypt. This day will become a memorial for you, and you will celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. You will celebrate it perpetually as a lasting ordinance. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. Surely on the first day you must put away yeast from your houses because anyone who eats bread made with yeast from the first day to the seventh day will be cut off from Israel. On the first day there will be a holy convocation, and on the seventh day there will be a holy convocation for you. You must do no work of any kind on them, only what every person will eat. That alone you may be prepared for you. So you will keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because on this very day I brought your regiments out from the land of Egypt, and so you must keep this day perpetually as a lasting ordinance. In the first month, from the fourteenth day of the month, 
In the evening you will eat bread made without yeast until the twenty-first day of the month in the evening. For seven days yeast must not be found in your houses, for whoever eats what is made with yeast, that person will be cut off from the community of Israel, whether a foreigner or one born in the land. You will not eat anything made with yeast. In all the places where you live, you must eat bread made without yeast. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and told them, Go and select for yourselves a lamb or a young goat for your families and kill the Passover animals. Take a branch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and apply it to the top of the door frame and the two side posts, some of the blood that is in the basin. Not one of you is to go out the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike Egypt, and when he sees the blood on the top of the door frame and the two side posts, then the Lord will pass over the door, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You must observe this event as an ordinance for you and for your children forever. When you enter the land that the Lord will give to you, just as he said, you must observe the ceremony. When your children ask you, what does the ceremony mean to you? Then you will say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. When he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt, when he struck Egypt and delivered our households, the people bowed down low to the ground. And the Israelites went away and did exactly as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. It happened at midnight. The Lord attacked all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the prison and all the firstborn of the cattle. Pharaoh got up in the night along with all his servants in all Egypt and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was no house in which there was not someone dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron in the night and said, Get up, get out from among my people, both you and the Israelites. Go, serve the Lord as you have requested. Also take your flocks and your herds just as you have requested and leave, but bless me also. The Egyptians were urging the people on in order to send them out of the land quickly, for they were saying, We are all dead. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added, with their kneading troughs bound up in their clothing on their shoulders. Now the Israelites had done as Moses told them. They had requested from the Egyptians silver and gold items and clothing. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and they gave them whatever they wanted, and so they plundered Egypt. The Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, there were about 600,000 men on foot, plus their dependents. A mixed multitude also went up with them, and flocks and herds, a very large number of cattle. They baked cakes of bread without yeast, using the dough they had brought from Egypt, for it was made without yeast. Because they were thrust out of Egypt and were not able to delay, they could not prepare food for themselves either. Now the length of time the Israelites lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, on the very day, all the regiments of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt. It was a night of vigil for the Lord to bring them out from the land of Egypt. And so on this night, all Israel is to keep the vigil to the Lord for generations to come. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner may share in eating it, but everyone's servant who is bought for money, after you have circumcised him, may eat it. A foreigner and a hired worker must not eat it. It must be eaten in one house. You must not bring any of the meat outside the house, and you must not break a bone of it. The whole community of Israel must observe it. When a foreigner lives with you and wants to observe the Passover to the Lord, all his males must be circumcised, and then he may approach and observe it. And he will be like one who is born in the land, but no uncircumcised person may eat of it. The same law will apply to the person who is native-born and to the foreigner who lives among you. So all the Israelites did exactly as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. 
And on this very day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt by their regiments. God, I love watching Moses in this story. You know, I guess I, because I watch so many movies, I always think of Moses in the Hollywood production and big and strong and confident. But that's not how he started out. He started out very afraid and fearful and doubting um, and not willing to put himself out there for you because he was so afraid of his own abilities. Whether it was speaking correctly for you um, or getting people to listen to him, there was just a lot of anxiety and fear of going into ministry for you. And here we're at a point of the story where he and his brother Aaron are leading out from the original 70 that arrived with the sons of Jacob, are leading out 600,000 men, probably close to about 2 million with all their women and children, not to mention all the animals. He is leading over 2 million people out of slavery. He has just gone and spoken in front of Pharaoh numerous times, doing disastrous things to Pharaoh's Egypt and his people and the crops and now to the firstborn. And yet we see this Moses who through a transformation of your strength is now able to lead so many people in faith in you and trusting you in a new relationship with you in a celebration of Passover for you. And I think about our own walk with you that we can become fearful and overwhelmed and scared and, and, and truthfully make a lot of excuses why we're not working in the ministry or helping out, or we keep saying no when people ask us to help with things. But I know that with your strength, you can take someone who is unsure of their own skills and how they fit in. And you can turn them into somebody like Moses who can speak on your behalf, who can go in front of not only uh, leaders, that Pharaoh was kind of scary, <laughs> leaders, to then go on leading hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of your people who you promised Abraham you would bring out of that situation. So today I ask God that you help us remember in our heart that we can't do these things. We are humans. We are broken. We have flaws. We sin. But with you, we can do all things. We can become great leaders in your ministry. We can help small children in your ministry. We can change lives for you in your ministry. We can do all of it, but only if we rely on you. God, thank you for that reminder today. How incredible and how amazing is it going to be to watch Moses uh, continue this journey with them. Thank you so much for everything you've given us. We love you very much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <music>